Thanks for joining us here in Geneva for WISIS Forum 2019, where a lot of the discussions are centered around ethics. To discuss it, I am joined by Mr. Konstantinos Kadachalios, his managing director at IEEE Standards. Konstantinos, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. And uh, it is a very timely moment because uh, uh, we are really f dealing with technologies which have uh, a very a big potential to improve our conditions of living on Earth. In the same time, they can be quite intrusive in yeah. our daily life. Yeah, you're talking about artificial intelligence, aren't you? Because a lot yes. of uh, the discussions here at WISIS Forum are centered, like I've said, around this uh, new technology. Yes, and I, I don't like to call it artificial intelligence because nobody knows exactly what it is. There is also a baggage related to this. So for me, it is uh, the new generation of computing systems and uh, with the uh, capacities and it is a tradition in computing and so but still there is something new emerging and uh, this makes it uh, it is the time now to think about the consequences because before it is uh, late and in certain aspects it is late so we have to act and uh, well, at IEEE we have started uh, years ago uh, contemplating about this and we did not stay on contemplation we created a global community there are thousands of people now from all around the world who frame the issues in a very interesting way. What are we talking about? If we mean transparency or accountability, what are the legal questions? What are the social implications of these technologies? And uh, this is quite a bottom-up process of people who came together. They define what they want to talk about. We don't tell them, you do this. And they came out with a kind of, uh, let's say, manifesto, which is uh, called Ethical Aligned Design. And they have the pleasure here uh, to be able to uh, say that we launched uh, the first edition, it is the third version, but it is the first mature edition. It is published a few days ago and it is available online. Creative Commons license, everybody can take it and use it. And people are taking and using it for many purposes. So it is a book, several hundreds of pages, but uh, it is very well structured and people can take what they need. And uh, we don't stay in the book. Uh, the, uh, we're engaging in a series of standardization projects about how to define transparency for logarithmic systems, how to, how to check for lack of undesired bias, and uh, also about data quality. There is a lot of projects allowed dat around data governance, uh, specific projects about children and their rights in the digital environment and the protection of, of their data. And uh, we are working very closely also with uh, legislators and regulators at certain uh, uh, countries who have gone quite far in uh, uh, the top down from legislation and regulation and we try to close the ranks with them to coming from bottom up with uh, codes of conduct for the profession and the uh, age appropriate platforms for the internet and so on so that these things can work in practice and if we solve this problem then we have addressed the needs and protecting the dignity of one third of the global users of the internet. Uh, of so course, it, it, it's huge. So, so what do you advocate exactly in, in the book? What's the right approach to you adopt? Uh, you mean generally? Generally, uh, we came up with uh, a series of high level principles and uh, many organizations have come up recently with many principles and uh, interesting, but ours are really, they came bottom up from what the global communities believe. We didn't give them. Eh? So, for instance, they say th uh, that principle number one uh, should be to uh, respect uh, and promote and protect the internationally recognized human rights. This is number one. And we were probably the first who framed it this way, that this technology should respect our codified human rights. And this is not so trivial because the most of the internet platforms really do not respect for children, the, uh, for instance, the children rights, although they are codified. They just ignore them. They mm -hmm. treat children as adults. So this is not so trivial what we're saying here. Mm -hmm. The second is about well-being. That means in a, a paradigm of uh, corporate capitalism, which where only quick profit of the next quarter is uh, really important, then these technologies are going to serve this. They're going to serve concentration of power and wealth but not the well-being of broader uh, groups or of humanity. So the well-being is very important as a criterion eh, for developing and applying these technologies. So the first two criteria are not technical. Eh? 
And then there are uh, other about data agency. I spoke about the intrusiveness of this technology. And this is extremely important because this is undermining democracy. This is happening as we're speaking. So we have to reclaim uh, part of our agency over our digital identity. We must be able to exist online as we exist offline. It cannot be that we are uh, in our physical life we feel free, in our digital life we are slaves yeah, because mm -hmm. we do not control our identity anymore. Uh, absolutely. So Th there's a real sense of urgency, isn't there? Absolutely. We've got to act now uh, no, before it's too late almost. Yesterday, yeah. there are people who say we don't care, but even now the people who gather the data come and say we need regulation. Please regulate ourselves. I don't want to uh, name the names. Eh? But uh, how credible is this? Eh? So, but still, eh, mm -hmm. even them realized the monsters they have created. Yeah. So it is uh, really necessary yesterday. Uh, and, uh, but we have started yesterday. We're not ready yet with all these actions. But already now, we are working together with governments, with municipalities, and uh, also with industry to help them understand what they're doing, assess the quality of their algorithmic systems and their data collections, and also to be able to show this to the citizens or to the customers. Listen, we really have systems that do what we are supposed to do and not something else. So we're not cheating you. Eh? And there is a need, also a, a need of uh, transparency and accountability towards also the, your users and citizens. And this is the gap we're filling with our work. So it is very practical eh? because we're creating the specifications and methodology to make this happen. Eh? And this is the best we can do as a professional community, a global uh, uh, community. And we're doing this since years we have started this. And this is the good news. Of course, we cannot do it alone. As I said, uh, there is a need to also for legislators to act and, to, and also for governments to create the right incentives. Uh, yeah. because it, it will take a concerted effort. Collaboration yes. is very and important. And really engaging with policy makers. This is the other part of the work we're doing, which is not always very visible. But we're engaging as advisors to governments to multilateral bodies like uh, OECD, uh, to international organizations like UNESCO, UNICEF, who are very much working together with them. And they have a, a big thirst for our knowledge uh, because we are the technical community. So, and, uh, so it is engaging doing our job better through standards and then engaging with the others to close the gap, build bridges. And it's not only us advising them. We're advising them in some technical matters, but we are learning also from them. What are the preoccupations? Wha what is the agenda so that we can introduce this also into our work? So this is quite significant, uh, uh, I believe. So yeah. this is a massive program. Yeah. Eh? And, and we're and very proud about this at IEEE. And, and again, this yeah, ethical absolutely. aligned design is a fantastic work. And uh, it can be just downloaded and used Okay. For instance, we have seen that uh, big industry actors, they take it, they customize it and use it. We don't even know about it because we don't need to know. So it is creative commons, everybody. Yeah. But then we discover it and we are pleased to see this. So it's out there, anyone can use it and yes. we should make the most of it. Yes, and in addition, our communities, both the communities that produce this work, uh, they have not finished. Now they're customizing what it means for policy makers, what it means, let's say, for this uh, type of industry, what it means for developing countries. We are building now groups to work on, on these customized versions. Mm. Uh, they are open. We welcome everyone who wants to come to participate participate and we have a series of standardization projects which are open to everyone to participate so uh, uh, if anyone is interested about how to take principles and go to practice we are please we are very welcome at IEEE this is what we are doing this is our DNA to create and to convene these global communities to act in a practical uh, matter okay Konstantinos thank you very much my pleasure